Good evening, and welcome to the special presentations of the City Council of the City of Myrna Valley. I call this meeting to order on December 17, 2019 at 5.30, 5 p.m. Uh, we will have a presentation from the DPSS Point in Time presentation, which is, I actually allow, um, Kim, if you want to mention what it stands for exactly. I, I know it's Disabled Program Services. Uh, hi, good evening, this Mayor, City Council. It's yeah. the Department of Public oh, Social sorry. Services, which includes child protection, adult uh, self-sufficiency, and a myriad other programs. Are we are we good to go then? Are you? Uh, is everyone here familiar with the homeless point in time count? Does everyone know what that means? Okay, great. I'm Kim Trone with the DPSS, Department of Public Social Services. I'd like to introduce uh, Tony Ortigo. He is uh, one of our executives with the uh, point in time count and oversees the continuum of care, which really um, manages a lot of the, the resources and activities that go into addressing homelessness. So you want to kick us off, Tony? Sure. Uh, again, Again, everyone, thank you for having me over this evening, and um, I'm thank you for taking an interest in our point in time count. I'm here today to explain to all of you what the point in time count is. For those of you who have a good idea, perhaps you'll pick up something that you weren't familiar with. So our point in time count is an annual event that we have for um, some federal funding, our housing urban development uh, funding that comes through once every year. Our point in time count is kind of that pit takes a pivoting role in helping us to determine how much funding we're going to get for the homeless in our county as well as other counties throughout the nation. In addition to that, um, our point in time count also it acts as a good indicator or gauge for both state funding as well. Uh, state funding normally, uh, again, is um, revolves around what our point in time count shows, and it's really important for the different communities such as Moreno Valley, Riverside, Paris, and so forth throughout our counties to help our continuum of care for Riverside County's um, continuum of care to help them identify where, would, where best resources sh uh, should be um, invested in. I'm just going to piggyback on this year and say that this year, for the first time, we're counting people who are living in their cars. I am a resident of Moreno Valley, and I know that uh, places where I shop, there are people living in their cars, and I know we see that throughout the county and throughout our communities. So that's been a really nice addition, along with working alongside UCR to improve our data collection. We're totally technical now, and, uh, and so I'll let Tony, I didn't mean to jump in there. No, that, that's fine. And, and again, uh, I have a PowerPoint presentation, and tonight I was given a little bit of a different version, so bear with me. So the point in time count, as I mentioned, is federally mandated by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, it is uh, a, an event that's used to collect data <coughs> on uh, that reflects a snapshot. It's one day of the year, so a, a quick snapshot of the, uh, population that we, uh, the homeless population that we have here in Riverside County. The point in time count data, again, plays a critical role in our COC competition um, for our uh, notice of funding availability, an application that we, um, we DPSS, um, Riverside County Department of Social Services, uh, COC core group, and COC stands for Continuum of Care, uh, that, that manages the um, federal and state funding, <coughs> excuse me, that comes into our county. So a quick overview. Um, would be to kind of help you understand what, what those numbers mean. So in, in Riverside County, um, in 2019 of January, we did a, our point in time count and we recognized that we had 2,811 sheltered and unsheltered homeless adults and children countywide. Uh, the breakdown is as, is as our, our veterans, out of that number, our veterans um, accounted for 107, um, which, was an, uh, which was an increase um, of 8% over our 2018 count. As far as youth ages 18 to 24, uh, they accounted for a 181 of our total 2811. Um, that was a 2% two per, two increase from the previous year's point in time count. Our elderly ages 62 and over, again, these are interviews only, they accounted for 129 total unsheltered um, individuals for our 2019 point in time count. And that was a 16% increase from the previous year. 
And I want to bring that to your attention because this year we are focusing a lot on the youth and the aging population, the elderly who are 62 and over. Um, we're expecting nationwide, as, and, and, and particularly in this county, um, which is one of the fastest growing counties in the state, to continue to see an increase, unfortunately, in that elderly population homelessness. And that'll help us to determine better strategies and interventions that we can use towards our homeless population. Uh, children 17 and under, um, we accounted 15 out of the 2,800 plus individuals. Families with children, um, we accounted for two unsheltered in 2019. Yes, that does seem very low. Unfortunately, as you know, I, I'm sus we're suspecting that that number is very unrepresentative of, of that population. That's a population that's very hard to categorize and to, uh, and to recognize as well because uh, during the period of, of the time in the morning when we do the, time in, the point in time count, they may not be as accessible um, and, and so we don't come across them as often. So that's one of the theories that we, we, we recognize that the, the, the total amount for two is, is very low. Of the uh, youth count, which is total, 196 uh, total unsheltered was for the 2019, an 8% increase over the 2018 year. And the chronically homeless, um, 727 totaled unsheltered point in time count individuals. And that was a staggering 88% increase over the 2018. Um, as for District 5 overview, 20, we had a 21% decrease 2019 versus uh, 2018. Um, <clears throat> that may be, again, accounted for individuals um, being somewhat um, under, undercounted and, and the migratory patterns that they may take from city to city, unfortunately. In addition to that, um, that underrepresentation may be due to not having enough volunteers in certain areas, such as in District 5. Uh, to cover the entire um, district, you know, well. Um, one of the things that I want to bring to your attention is that our increase of total unsheltered and sheltered individuals for 2019 homeless point in time count was up by about 21 percent. Um, keep in mind that may have been due to um, an improved methodology that we utilized, and these methodologies are set forth by this, the Housing and Urban Development. Um, so we increased our methodology. We also increased our technology. We used the Survey123 uh, app, which was a, um, uh, a very crucial tool that many counties throughout the state of California was able to utilize as well. So that's why not only in Riverside County, but other counties, uh, the majority of the, of the other counties in the state saw a staggering increase in their point in time count. And just really quick to clarify for the public, District 5, can you mention what cities are included in that? Um, sure. A look. And be uh, like Banning, yeah, Beaumont, we have ba Valley. Banning, Beaumont, Calamesa, uh, Menifee, Moreno Valley, Paris, and the unincorporated areas, which are, lo are very large. Okay. And that's where you said the 21% decrease. Yes, yes, for District for for uh, District Five. Okay. So those might be some of the reasons. In in addition to that, we also want to recognize our community partners in District 5 and all the help that they do. Uh, a lot of the nonprofit agencies as well as our faith-based agencies as well as our governmental agencies on the, on, in the county as well as the city agencies all I'm, I'm quite sure have played a part in trying to decrease homeless as well. Any questions? Any other questions so far? Uh, the methodology, again, we use survey-based account. It was a, a multi-day count. Um, that means a survey of people, we surveyed people at various social service locations and other public and private locations to identify who were unsheltered versus who were not sheltered and who could be counted and those who could not be counted. The unsheltered count um, was comprised of individuals and families with a primary nighttime residence that's a public or private place not designed uh, for an ordinary use as a regular sleeping accommodation for human beings. And again, that follows the standard uh, definition for HUD. Um, it also included the street-based count, service-based count, uh, follow-up uh, count and survey, and the unincorporated youth. And I also want to bring to your attention that this year, we're also planning on focusing very heavily on a lot of the unincorporated areas in Riverside County. Riverside County being a geographically a very large county, it plays a, a, a huge challenge for us because of the unincorporated areas are so, so vast.
homeless challenges. Thank you, Kim. Um, obviously, uh, for many of you who recognize mental health is a big challenge for a lot of our homeless individuals, I want to caution us to, to, um, to further, a further adding to the stigma of homeless individuals. It's not that all homeless individuals have mental illness. Um, but we can fairly say that many individual, individuals that we see, um, we suspect that they, are, that, that they are suffering from some form of mental illness because of, 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 the, um, uh, the, of the, the readiness to make themselves available in the public. Unfortunately, you may see a lot of individuals walking on the streets um, who are homeless and displaying signs, of, signs that may be indicative of mental illness or behavioral health conditions. What we don't see <coughs> is that also the, the large population of homeless individuals who don't, don't have a mental illness. They're a lot likely to be a, as prevalent in the community. We may not see them as much around, hanging around shopping centers and displaying uh, behaviors that may get our, our attention, unfortunately. Uh, substance use is also a big problem that we have with, with uh, the homeless population here in the state of California as well as the nation. Obviously, socioeconomic conditions leading to deep poverty and public health issues, all of those really uh, create l very large challenges amongst our homeless population. Addressing homeless together, um, that's why we're here tonight at this venue. Um, we are really pushing, we as in Department of Social Services and the Continuum of Care, um, we are really trying to help uh, the communities recognize that homelessness is a community issue uh, we applaud cities like Marina Valley and neighboring cities for really stepping it up and trying to get involved. Um, our, again, our faith-based and, and many of the nonprofit agencies really do play a large part in um, assisting the homeless population, both getting them back on their feet or into some type of housing um, and or other services that's necessary for them to improve their lives. Uh, working collaborat collaboratively with each city um, will create some stepping stones towards a comprehensive, comprehensive regional approach to addressing of the various homeless needs. And so we, again, are going around the county expressing that collaboration, and that is uh, pretty indicative of what our continuum of care and Board of Governments is, is, um, is uh, hoping for as well. How do we get involved? So. Um, we can get involved again by making it known that we do have a point in time count that's coming about and the importance of the t point in time count as far as us, uh, Riverside County applying for grant funding. Um, volunteering re registration uh, ends January 20th. So I'd encourage all of you to get involved with your, um, with your family, w with uh, your community, um, even in business owners and, and those individuals uh, who are interested in improving the community um, to encourage them to uh, volunteer. We, last year in Riverside County, we had a large increase in, in our volunteers, uh, which really helped us out. We believe that's one of the reasons why we saw an increase in the homeless count population. I believe we had an increase um, of roughly about 40% or maybe 50% um, of in volunteers. We are looking for a large increase in our volunteers for the youth this year. Last year we had, I believe, less than 200. This year we're looking at having a little over 350 plus individuals, or hoping to get 350 plus individuals volunteering just, just on the youth side as well. Um, opportunities, we, again, we, our point in time count will be conducted on January 29th from 5.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. for the adults. And uh, the youth point in time count will be Thursday, January 29th through the 31st from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. I do have some information and some flyers in the back. If you are interested in taking these, I'd appreciate it. Uh, there is some information on who to, who to contact as well as information on how to register. Um, all volunteers, again, must have a smartphone um, because we will be using a, an application called Survey123. So, you know, really the criteria is you should have the ability to do a lot of walking and the ability to have and have a, your own smartphone and be able to use it for this particular um, event. Any further questions? Um, well, actually, I was going to ask uh, as far as uh, I haven't actually done this before, but uh, so they download the app and then do they get like routes? Do I, yes. Individuals get certain routes, or does everybody have the you know? Or go ahead. 
Yes, Mayor. So, so again, I'm, I'm, I didn't introduce this, but I'm fairly new to our point in time count. Um, as of about seven months ago, I became the deputy director over our continuum of care for Department of Social Services. Um, so it's my understanding that we do have uh, vantage points throughout the city. So there are a number of locations uh, that we use as deployment sites. And depending on how many people sign up, for example, in District 5, we will um, route them to certain areas, for example, Moreno Valley, Banning, and so forth. Um, on the registration, it does ask wh wh what your preference would be as far as the city you would like to serve. Um, and we try to coordinate um, at the deployment sites who's going where. So you get there, we have the facilitators who are there, and to assign uh, areas for people to uh, go out and scout and provide the uh, surveys to individuals who are, who, are at, who are homeless. And then you just take an average? We, we actually take an electronic count um, via the app, and we, um, we are looking to do more survey uh, counts. Um, last year and years prior, we also did non-survey counts, and again, that's for individuals who perhaps did not want to participate in the survey, but we clearly had an indication perhaps that they were homeless, so we were, were able to take a, a, um, a non-survey count and identify uh, those individuals and, uh, and the challenges that go along with that, and trying to identify the appropriate age group for them to fall into is, can be challenging. Obviously, we can recognize the youth from adult, but sometimes it's very difficult to, to categorize an, an approximate age for the adults. And is there any way that we can help? I mean, maybe just letting people know to volunteer for these opportunities, or? Yes. yes. I will um, let Mario give a little bit of information. Uh, Mayor, uh, City Council members, my name is Mario Gray. Obviously, you guys already know me. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, there is a great way that you guys can get involved. I know you guys have a, a, an amazing website that's won uh, tons of awards. It would be a great opportunity to post something on there um, to make sure that residents know about this. So I think it's really important that we partner up. Uh, you know, Supervisor Jeff Hewitt's office um, is available for you guys uh, to use as a deployment center if you guys would like. Uh, we're using a youth advisory council uh, uh, that they will be participating for this as well. So if you want to include your youth program to get involved with the youth count, that's also something that you can that you can do to to, to help. Um, so there's a lot of things that the city uh, can do, um, and really it comes down to uh, being open to opportunities. Um, I mentioned to uh, someone just in the audience here that DPSS is willing to provide one of their season coordinators to come and help you guys build a grid that you guys can use uh, to deploy, uh, deploy, uh, deploy volunteers. And really the, this app has really changed the entire game of counting folks because before it, it was all handwritten. So the numbers are become very skewed. Everybody has different kind of way of writing their numbers. So if you can't, if, if it wasn't legible, you couldn't use it. What this what this app does, it creates those X and Y coordinates so you can know if it's in Myrna Valley, or it's in Riverside, wherever that might be, every single street will be marked and every single point will be marked. So we'll know exactly where they will be. Um, with this data, we can create uh, GIS maps, hot maps, so we can, uh, we can provide the city uh, data that they can use to kind of deploy those services that they might need. Um, so for example, your Salvation Army project which has been very successful, can be used in a larger scale, uh, depending on what this GIS maps do. Um, another thing that we can do is uh, we'll send you all, email you guys out, or Kim will, uh, the uh, the social media kit, and this will be able, uh, you guys can use it to, to you know, release it on your social media so everyone can, can know what's going on, and I obviously will share that on Supervisor Hewitt's uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter accounts. So. And is this the first time that you guys are doing the app? Or? Second time. Oh, okay, second time. Yeah. And, okay. It, and it continues. Yeah, Actually, the, the, the point in time, the technology piece just got a big award today from the state, California oh. Association of Counties, because it's really integrating with UCR and really improving the app and our ability to collect data. You were asking about the survey. You would go, you would um, register for the survey, and then you'll get the survey on your phone. Uh, it's not quite up ready yet, but get registered, and then it's all, there's ways to eliminate duplication and things like that through the technology piece. That's what I was about to ask. Like, how do you avoid, um, you know, like if I count somebody, and then what if, you know, Council Member Cabrera goes by there. Sure, no, that's Did we a get good, a double number? You, you possibly could, and so oh. they there's a couple questions that are um, meant to identify duplication, but they've built in some different things into the technology so that they've got it pretty pretty down so that there should not be much duplication. Uh, it would be very rare, but it's not impossible, that's for sure. 
if someone gets double. Yeah, vaccinated. but it's not going to be highly likely. Okay. Other questions? Thank you. Go ahead, um, Council Member Dr. Thornton. Um, thank you so much for coming and presenting. This is a very important uh, count, and um, as stated, this is really uh, what determines how much money we receive for homeless from not only uh, the federal government but the state government. Um, so um, I participated in two past point in time counts. Council Member Cabrera also last year, I think Mayor Protean Baca, we had Marshall uh, Ironman, our CFO. Um, and so I had a couple of questions. Um, you mentioned the youth point in time count was done last year. I've never heard the youth point in time count before, so I'm happy to hear that that is something that's going on. Um, I just want to make sure residents know that when you register to be involved in the point in time count, you can actually pick the Moreno Valley location to uh, participate in, and I would, I would encourage. I would say t people should do two things. They should go skydiving and do the homeless point in time count because they're both life changing. Yes. <laughs> um, it, it really breaks apart any stereotype that you might have, but at the same time, you're actually out there talking to these people and hearing about the challenges that they're having. Um, can you go back to the original slide that mentioned all the different statistics of uh, the different demographics of homeless? Yes, this breakdown. Sorry, yeah. So I have a question concerning the youth. I'm sorry, the children, and then you have youth count total. What's the difference between the children, 17 or under, as 15 total unsheltered, and then two slots below that, the youth count total? Youth is used uh, quite often to also include young adults through the age of 24. But so then you have youth at the top of between 18 and 24. Oh, okay, that then we'll have to come back to that and look That's at that. Typo. And it, it's probably, yeah, it's okay. probably a mistake. Okay, so um, yeah, if we can get some accurate numbers on the on that, the, the youth between 18 and 24 and then the children 17 and under. Um, and then also you didn't really define what what is chronically homeless. So how do you all define chronically homeless? Councilwoman, I believe that the numbers are accurate. The youth 18 to 24 is specifically for that breakdown. And then the youth count total also includes, um, I believe, those uh, those children with families. Okay. But we'll, we'll, we'll exactly. clarify. But, yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll double check that for you guys. But I believe the numbers are accurate. Okay. Yeah. The chronically homeless, how do you all define that? Chronically homeless would be individuals who have, who have a history, obviously, of being homeless. Um, homeless, uh, again, um, from the HUD's definition is an individual whose prior night stay was in, in an, uh, uh, an, uh, a condition that's not meant for hu human habitation. Um, so when we look at individuals, whether they've been uh, um, um, homeless for you know, several weeks and or a couple of years, I think we need to recognize, the cr I believe, the chronically homeless is individuals who have continued to be homeless within the past 12 months or the past year and a half. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that but that was the same definition that, that um, we've used, but to also educate the public, correct. the people that are listening. And, and, and I, I'm sorry, and I can follow up with, with a, a more specific and confirmed definition. Okay, and then also the for the veterans, I'm kind of, it is, it, that's an interesting uh, number to, he to hear from, to read, because we also say that Riverside County, we, we reached functional zero, considering considering veterans homelessness. And so when we're going out doing point in time count and we identify a vet, we know that right away we can contact VA Loma Linda and they can be in a bed the same day, right? And so my, my question to you all is, when you're saying that there's 107 veterans, are these people self-identifying as veterans? Are we checking that they're actually a vet with the DD-214, that, that we're following the federal definition of veterans because someone who's been dishonorably discharged from the military or served during an area that was in conflict is not considered technically a veteran concerning the federal definition. So I'm wondering with that number, is that something that you all are keeping tracking? Yes, yeah, so my understanding is yes, we are asking to, that they confirm it. In addition to that, any, any veteran that we come across that is homeless, we are able to provide them transportation that day uh, to the qualified centers that may be um, opportunities for them to be housed, and we do work closely with the Veterans Administration Center on that. Thank you so much. Uh, Council Member Cabrera. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for presenting, first of all, for being here. Um, uh, first is just a, more of a comment. Um, I know that you mentioned for the 
for the uh, actual count itself, uh, you're looking for a lot of volunteers uh, that you need more than we have had before. And uh, Mario, you mentioned the YAC, the Youth Advisory Council, um, which would be good because there's a lot of members in that. Um, just more of a suggestion as well um, in case you're looking because um, if you're trying to make contact with youth, you know, it's, it, I think it's better that you have youth making that contact, right? It's easier to get uh, answers from those questions. Um, so maybe working closer with the colleges, right? Like Moreno Valley College and their uh, clubs that they have there, um, a, a lot of their uh, departments as well for like uh, health and human services. There's a lot of people on that college and even at places like UCR who I believe would be very happy to volunteer for this day. So just kind of an idea there. I'm sure you're already incorporating that as well. Um, and then two questions for you. The first one uh, has to do with um, the funding. So you, you did mention briefly about uh, the funding that comes from the federal and the state governments. Um, and there's ways that that's calculated, right? So can you share a little bit more detail regarding you know, how the number of homeless that is uh, f concluded by this uh, point in time count, like how, how is that uh, correlated to the amount of funding that we get? And um, when that funding is, is calculated, does it all go to the state and then it comes down or does some of it go directly to the city? So can you share a little bit more? Sure. Uh, so generally speaking, because I, I don't have the exact calculations that each formula uses only because of the complexities of, of each grant. But there, there we have received what's called heap and cash grants in the past from the state. And um, there, there's an irony to that. So when homeless count goes up, typically with the, fi with the federal funding through HUD, uh, we are, are scored somewhat lower. And so there's a, there's a, a rating uh, on how counties or continuum of cares are scored. Um, and and uh, <coughs> pardon me. And, in a, and it's based upon the point in time count. So with the federal government, we, as the count goes up, our score goes down, which, which eventually will uh, um, equate to less funding. When the count goes up for the state, we get more funding. So there is kind of a little bit of a balance. So um, within the past uh, year, we've received a little bit more state funding. In addition to that, the government has had some pretty hefty initiatives to um, uh, combat the, the homeless crisis. So that's also helped with, with not necessarily just looking at the numbers, um, but also looking at um, areas that, you know, that, that may be um, considered uh, a little bit uh, more in need. So uh, the federal government, uh, again, takes, takes it on a scoring ra ratio. The state doesn't necessarily look at it from a scoring ratio. They look at the numbers and they disperse the funding um, through the COCs um, some of the funding, although, will go directly to cities if they qualify. They're, the state identified 16 cities this year to, to receive direct funding, um, Riverside being one of them. Uh, they're basically metropolitan areas, I believe, that are, are rather large, 300 or 350,000 and above. Thank you. And one last question uh, regarding uh, how, how the areas or um, locations are actually decided. Uh, you know, the past two years I've been out there and – uh, so we get split up into groups and then we get sent out to a certain area and we're accompanied by our deputies, right? Our officers go out there with us. Um, but how is that, how are those locations selected? Who makes that decision? You know, I know that it's, it's limited by how many volunteers actually participate, but you know, who picks the location where we go? Who, who makes that decision? Generally, before before the actual count, you know, the cities and municipalities, the county has some general idea. And prior to the count, usually 20, between 72 and 24 hours, uh, individuals will go out and sort of assess and surveil so that they can determine where it's h more highly likely that you will encounter homeless individuals to be counted. So it, that's one of the advantages of having more volunteers who are able to disperse to places where people might be less visible and less seen, uh, even on a soft count. Um, and we will be looking at cars this year. You know, um, we're not really going into RVs at this point, but cars we all, we all recognize are um, becoming a habitat for many individuals and families. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah.
just just to add to that, um, to answer the question a little more direct, you, you, you guys decide how the, the point in time count is done in your city. Um, some cities have their, their sheriff's department or their code enforcement that deal with uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, operations, so they see the homeless more often. But at the end of the day, you guys can decide whether you go to three locations decided by your sheriff's department, or you can decide to go through every single street that your city has based, obviously, on the availability of, of volunteers. Um, though the soft count is done prior, there, there's a, there's something that hap that hampers a little bit of what happens on the actual day of counting. Some folks might get, uh, some homeless people might get terrified of that. If a, if a police officer approaches them three days before the count, they might leave. So the day of the count, that homeless person might not be there anymore. They might leave to a different location that the council might choose not to visit because the sheriff told them to go to that particular location. So we have to keep in mind um, how you guys uh, map out the entire city. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mario. Thank you so much, Kim, and thank you to the Department of Public Social Services. Yes, hey, yes. thank you so much. Thanks so much for Appreciate your time. it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And that ends our special presentations. And then uh, Steve. Our media person, um, I think he normally t uh, likes two minutes, so we'll just give him uh, two minutes and then we'll get started in our meeting. Usually. Good evening and welcome to the joint meeting of the City Council of the City of Marina Valley, Marina Valley Community Services District, City of Successor Agency for the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Marina Valley, Marina Valley Housing Authority, Marina Valley Public Financing Authority and the Board of Library Trustees. The City Council receives a separate stipend for CSD meetings. I now call this regular meeting to order on December 17, 2019 at 6, 12 p.m. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by, uh, okay, how about, um, uh, is Frank here? No, Frank's not here, okay. Um, Rafael? Okay, Rafael, uh, who is also a, a planning commissioner, Rugueros, please remain standing for the invocation, which will be given by Chaplain Brent E. Sherrick from Marina Valley Police Department. Can everyone stand, put their hand over their heart, and repeat, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Would you please bow your heads with me? Father God, we just come before thee right now, Lord, and we would just ask, Lord, that you would be in the midst of this meeting, Lord Father God, that you would help direct and guide the conversations that are going to go on here tonight, Lord. And maybe decisions that are going to be made, Lord, that they would be made without any bias, without any prejudice, but they would be made in the best interest of the people they represent, Lord. And for those that are making any of those decisions, Lord, that they would be able to make them without any bias and without any prejudice, Lord, and give them that wisdom and that discernment to make the hard decisions that may need, may need to be made tonight. And Lord, I'd also ask that you would, uh, also as we're getting into our Christmas and holiday season, Lord, that you would just allow people to just take time to be with their family and their friends and to rest from the business of their days, Lord. So Lord, we thank you for that. And we ask this in God's holy son's name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you, Chaplain uh, uh, Brent, for those uh, kind words of an invocation. I appreciate that. Thank you. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Yes, sir. <laughs> Councilmember Thornton. Present. Councilmember Cabrera. Here. Mayor Gutierrez. Here. Let the record reflect. Councilmember Marquez and Mayor Pro Tembaca are absent. All right, thank you. Staff introductions, please. Pat Hakez Nare, City Clerk. Jessica Lambarena, Administrative Assistant. Marshall Ironman, Chief Financial Officer, City Treasurer. Martin Kostanowicz, City Attorney. Mike Lee, Interim City Manager. Alan Brock, Assistant City Manager. Michael Wolf, Director of Public Works, City Engineer. Patty Nevins, Acting Community Development Director. Mike Kohler, Administration Lieutenant, Marino Valley Sheriff Station. Abdul Ahmed, Fire Chief. Kathleen Sanchez, Human Resources Director. 
Patty Solano, Parks and Community Services Director. All right, thank you. And welcome to the staff, welcome to everyone that's here. Um, just a, fi a friendly reminder, uh, we do have Spanish translation services if anyone needs them, uh, they're right there in the back. Also, the blue speaker slips, if you'd like to speak on any item that's on non-agenda items, uh, please uh, make sure that you fill that out. And then if you'd like to speak on any of the agenda items, that's actually done in between um, when the agenda item is called. And each of those are three minutes as well. Um, just uh, briefly, just because uh, we are missing two other council members, Mayor Pertambaca and also Council Member Marquez, I'm gonna ask if there's consensus uh, from my colleagues that we move um, item G2, which is the selection of Mayor Pro Tem to January 7th. If you guys are fine with that. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we'll go ahead and move that to January 7th. And then we'll go ahead and go straight to, um, actually before that, let's just go ahead and go into um, um, G2, really, uh, G1, which is um, recommended updates. We'll do that one first. Pavement management, five year look, five year look ahead. Report of public works. Let's go straight to the business and then we'll do the other stuff. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. As the mayor indicated, this is an update to our pavement management plan, our five year look ahead. I got a presentation. Uh, just put some stats on the on the first slide here. Uh, a little over 500 center line miles in the city. This is the city's largest um, physical asset, over $600 million uh, as an asset. Um, we have quite a bit of critical repairs and deferred maintenance. Again, listed up there on the slide, $100 million in critical repairs and $250 million of deferred maintenance. So the payment management plan, the intent, here's to focus those resources and identify the priorities. And in the staff report, list the selection criteria that we use to make this recommendation to council. The original payment management plan five year look ahead uh, was looked at and approved by council back in March of this year. Uh, we are, what we're trying to do tonight is update that for the fifth year. This is, the intent is to be a five year rolling uh, period so that we can identify those priorities for the next five years. So the majority of what we're doing tonight is to add that fifth year. We are making some minor um, adjustments to some of the prior segments that's uh, enlisted in the staff report um, if there's any questions on that. So just quickly, this is obviously not meant to be seen, but just to be looked at from a perspective. This is the payment management plan, the five-year look at maps. These are identified by fiscal year, different colors. And we bring in the last fiscal year, which in this map would be green. But what I've done here is I've listed the streets out. So if there's any questions tonight about specific streets, uh, everything that's uh, in the other colors besides that light green on the bottom right are ones that were already on the list, already approved by council. So the fifth year for arterials is listed down there on the bottom right. This is the local streets. These are the residential streets. And the, uh, as identified in the original payment management plan, the intent here is to try to focus in on the CDBG target areas uh, for using to maximize the use of those funds. Again, this is showing the five years the, with the fifth year, the new year being that light green. And this is the listed uh, streets. And I've um, enlarged the, uh, the last portion. So we, if, if there are any questions about the specific streets, we can talk to those. But those are the 37 streets that recommended to be added for that fifth year. So our recommendation for council is to concur with the updated uh, payment management plan five-year look ahead. Okay. That concludes the report. Thank you, Michael. And, you know, and just to the public know that, I mean, um, for the most part, I think from 2007 to 2014 or 15, there was really a lot of money put into the streets and there was no, um, you know, funds that were really allocated to that. <laughs> uh, but I really applaud, you know, this council, you know, and really approving the budget and really moving forward and, and doing this five-year plan and we're actually doing something about it. And this year, in fact, you know, if you're driving around town, you'll, you'll notice that there's already some repavement actually happening. So this is a, a great plan, I think. Thank you. Okay, um, let's see, no. Okay, Council Member Dr. Thornton. <coughs> Mike, Michael, could you? Go, did you have a map for the um, surface streets that were added for the 2024-25? I do. I actually have some uh, sort of tighter versions if we want to dive into the, some of the, the details here. Not the local streets, but the, the major... The, the arterials. arterials? Yeah. I saw it too. It was so I broke up the maps into little four quadrants, so if we want to talk a little more detail. So this is the sort of the northwest quadrant of the city. It's everything in light green. I just wanted to see if Redlands Boulevard north of Ironwood was added to it. 
Okay. Yeah. I, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, with, with the 60, having the, um, the construction going on, we're using Redlands. Well, not we are. Trucks are using Redlands more and more to bypass the 60 and so are cars and to go onto Santa Mateo to take it out 60 uh, East land. So, you know, I just would hope in the future we add um, this area between Ironwood and um, Locust or up to the border. Um, because it's it's really uh, tore up from the increased traffic from the 60 having that um, that construction going on. But thank you so much for the work. All right. Thank you, Michael. Um, we'll go ahead and public comments on this item. Yes, Tom Jarrell. Okay. <coughs> Any other public comments? He's the only one. Okay. Good evening, Mary Gutierrez, and Good evening. council members, and members of the staff and the public, both here in the chambers and watching at home. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I uh, uh, just last evening had a nice conversation. I've been trying to coordinate with uh, our public works director, uh, Michael Wolf, about potholes, and uh, he gave me a bit of his time and. Uh, we had a little bit of a, a, a good dialogue and uh, uh, maybe some ideas, and uh, but I, I learned quite a bit in a, sh in a few short minutes. He was able to cover. He knows his stuff, so I thank you and uh, Mr. Wolf. And uh, I still think I'm on to something, though. I am not. I haven't worked it out yet. So I get these funny ideas in my mind. And they gotta germinate for a while. But anyhow, uh, but I uh, I really commend this five-year plan. I think it's uh, really neat to reach out that far, and uh, you know look at the city in a. Uh, overall way. I do have one question uh, whether or not uh, weed abatement, it's something I had suggested as a uh, stopgap, you know, it's not a cure-all, but can avoid a lot of uh, damage and uh, if that's something that's integrated then maybe I get some comment from staff. And then one other question, I, I put a, uh, are they going to take comments uh, for just things off the agenda later? Because uh, I had put a slip in for that. Uh, that'll come later. Okay, that's right. Thank you very much. Oh, and I will, we got a, a very esteemed public works director, I think he's still out in the hallway, Mr. Jim Smith, worked for the city in the early days, and I think about 89 to, uh, uh, and about 95, 96, uh, and he, uh, he was in charge of capital project and land development, he went on to become a, uh, a um, city engineer, and uh, then a, uh, uh, wasn't it like community, uh, public works director out in Indio, he did, had quite a career, but he had a lot to do with our, Early things, a good man, tall, slender guy out in the hallway, and Charles Rangel also worked with some, a couple of people from the past here. Thank you. Thanks so much, Tom. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, we will go to um, council deliberation on this item. Okay, I'll entertain a motion by council to approve staff's recommendation number. Oh, oh, you have a comment? Okay, council member Cabrera. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Mayor. Just real quick, um, again, just wanna just wanna um, commend Public Works for the work that they're doing. I was talking with Michael earlier today uh, about how I had some time finally uh, to drive around, just you know, to really uh, look at what's going on, and um, I, I I did an entire loop around like half the city on all the new roads. It's just it's amazing, it's beautiful. So I'm looking forward to next year's phase of road repair. So thank you again. Okay, entertain a motion by council. Okay, motion by uh, council member Dr. Thornton, second by council member Cabrera. Please vote. Okay, motion carries. And we will go straight to um, consent calendar. Actually, we'll go back to consent calendar. We are now um, gonna be in the consent calendar, which is sections A through E on the agenda. All items listed on the consent calendar, sections A, B, C, and D and E are considered to be routine and non-controversial and may be enacted by one motion. The motion to adopt the consent calendars is deemed to be a separate motion by each agency and shall be so recorded by the city clerk. Items withdrawn for report or discussion will be heard after public hearing items. At this time, if there's any council items to be removed or council uh, questions or comments, uh, please press uh, your request to speak. Okay, if there's none, then I'm going to uh, ask if there's any public comments to the clerk, Madam Clerk. None. Okay, 
I'll entertain a motion by council to approve consent calendar. Okay, motion uh, made by council member Cabrera, seconded by council member Dr. Thornton. Please vote. Okay, and the motion carries. At this time, I also like to uh, just give a round of applause to our new uh, uh, city manager, if, uh, Mike Lee. We can give him an applause. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay. All right, um, we're going to go now to non agenda items. Madam Clerk, public comment on non agenda? Yes, sir. We have four Dr. Grace Williams, Adam Eventov, and Rafael Burgueras, and Tom Drew. Okay. Okay, that's the time. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Hi, good evening, good Honorable evening. Mayor and mm -hmm. members of City Council. Uh, Dr. Grace Williams, and as you know, campaign season is upon us. And I'm just here to introduce myself as uh, one of your candidates for Congress. And uh, just to give a brief introduction, I am an Army veteran, a working mom, a small business owner, and an economic developer. I've worked in the field of planning and economic development for nearly 20 years. Did more than 10 years over at the March Air Reserve Base with March JPA. In fact, one of the biggest projects I worked on and facilitated there that I'm very proud of is the Hecock Channel. And uh, I facilitated the partnerships with the county, with the city of Moval, your excellent staff who was right there alongside me in that project, protecting over 300 homes uh, just west of the military base and critical facilities at the military base, and also partnered up with leaders at the DOD at the March Air Reserve Base. And I am looking forward to being an extension of Marina Valley on the federal level so we can do more projects like the Hecock Channel, bring in funding for infrastructure and jobs training, prepare the city for the 2028 Olympics, bring in funding to help offset costs for the infrastructure needs right here so you can be successful in meeting the needs of your residents. Uh, my website information is drgrace4congress.com, drgrace4congress.com. My cell phone, my personal cell phone uh, is 416-0033, area code 951. I welcome everyone to contact me. I answer all questions personally, and I meet with people personally for coffee, and I'm looking forward to learning from the residents of Moval and partnering up, partnering up with the city council and your excellent staff in making Moval a place where dreams continue to soar. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Grace. Thank you. Um, Next three people, we have Adam, followed by Raphael and Tom Gerald. Hi. Good Thanks evening. Being mayor, city council, city staff, and community. Just want to take a moment of your time to introduce myself, but I've met so many of you already. Um, but uh, my name is Adam Eventop. I am uh, your new SoCal Gas representative. Uh, I've left a stack of cards with the city clerk, and uh, since I've already introduce myself to so many of you, I think I'll take this moment to just say that uh, if you're looking for ways to save on your bill or some safety tips since it's winter and things are getting a little colder and the thermostat is getting pushed up, you can always visit www.socalgas.com slash winter. Thank you for your time. Look forward to working with you in your community. Great. Thank you, Adam. And thank you for coming to our um Veterans event, I think it was, that uh, you were there. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, Rafael, who's also one of our planning commissioners. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening Mayor, Good evening. council members, staff, residents. I came to say um, Merry Christmas to our city, Mayor. Thank you. And Happy New Year. It's been a wonderful, wonderful year. I have to go back to 2018 to look at what we have done in the city of Moreno Valley. We have created jobs. We have the amphitheater. We got the skateboard park. We had the parade. We had all the parks and recs facility. I thank Patty for her hard work and her staff that kept, ev that kept everything safe and clean for the residents to enjoy every day. I also thank Ms. Sanchez for the people that got hired in the city of Moreno Valley and all the promotions. I mean, there was so much that happened in 2019, including Marshall with all the reports, the finance, all the rewards that we have won. You know, people don't realize how much we have done in 2019, Mayor. 
We don't want to forget 2019 because I look forward to seeing 2020 to be alike, to see the mayor and the council members to vote on things that we need in the city of Moreno Valley. It's so important. I also am going to enjoy Mike Lee as our city manager because I got to know him as a as a, a, a person that looks for jobs and things like that. Yeah. I mean, it's great. <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm going to look forward to see that, to see him work more because he knows it well. He knows our city well. So it's going to be good to see that go forward in 2020, you know. I'm grateful for the, for the program that the point of time, okay, the one thing I've learned about homeless, there are many that don't want anything. They don't care about anything or themselves. All they care is about living in the street and begging for money. And there are those that do need help. But I believe that the way we can help them is educating them and training, training them because a lot of the people that lost their jobs don't have that technology of today. And that's how some of them lose their jobs. So when we go forward and we think about what we're going to do in 2020 with this program, think about training. You can clean somebody up and feed them. But if you can't train them to help themselves, they'll go back to the streets. And that's what we don't want in the city of Moreno Valley. We don't want to see people that really want help to be living in the street with their families. That's something... And we know we can talk about the vets. They come out of the war, and all they know is how to hold a gun. But we can teach them how to hold another tool, technology. We can help people in the city of Moreno Valley. Merry Christmas, Moreno Valley. Okay. Thank you, Rafael. Appreciate it. Um, we have uh, Tom Gerald. Tom Gerald again speaking on behalf of myself and uh, a bit for the uh, Sundance Center where I spent a bit of time. Uh, Mary Gutierrez, uh, council members, members of the staff and the public, people here in the chambers and watching at home or on the internet. Uh, first of all, I want to say, you know, we have our meetings and we have the honor to pray. You know, I listen to a bit of talk radio, some of it's uh, Christian radio, and it is amazing in how many parts of this world you can't do that unless you're of the given faith of that country and uh, so we are very honored i'm never intimidated i'm i pray to jesus christ but i have no problem if a muslim man comes up here or a lady or uh or a buddhist you know they, I, they don't intimidate me i you know they have their freedoms and i respect their and that, it's a blessing to be able to uh practice your faith uh, or not your faith at all in this country so that's a real joy it's something we should always uh, embrace and uh, then i wanted to uh, definitely say congratulations to mike lee and uh, his new uh, promotion. You know, when the rumor mill kicked off a couple of weeks ago and you started hearing rumblings, maybe you changed the city manager. You know, when you're into your local government, it's like, oh, where are we going from here? Because, you know, we've had some great ones and we've had some not so great ones. <laughs> and uh, so I didn't know, you know, who was going to be on first. But I was very pleased when I found out it was going to be Mr. Lee. I've uh, enjoyed his uh, work at the economic development. And I'm sure he's going to do a great job. And, uh, and I'm sure Mr. Uh, uh, Brock and company will give you a strong right arm for them. And, you know, we've got a great bench there on our staff. So, uh, you know, they're doing a good job. You just got to look at our frugalness and the way we keep our budgets in line and keep uh, grinding out the sausage for the public. So good luck to you, Michael. And, uh, and you know, uh, uh, Rafael mentioned about the many things happening. I had a surprise visit. My daughter came out to visit me last weekend. And uh, she left here in 1986, a little girl. And... When she left, there was no Sunnymead Ranch. It was well, we were just starting it, but there was effectively no Sunnymead Ranch, uh, no Marina Valley Ranch, no mall. Uh, you know, and uh, over dinner, I mentioned something about the hospital, and she goes, "You have a hospital?" And I said, "No, we have two hospitals and a clinic." So, <laughs> so she was really impressed. And a little sidebar, and I call this one of these little abstracts. She took note of how nice the people were. She lives in St. Louis. And, you know, you think of the Midwest being very uh, congenial, and she said, boy, they were just so nice. And, and that's a good thing. You know, that, that, that's a, you know, it's an important part of a community fabric, so I appreciate it. And, uh, and I'll give uh, Deputy Brooks some uh, kudos. I, I heard on the radio that uh, a spiffy hat he wears is now regulation approved by the sheriff. So uh, he changed the, uh, the venue and sharp look to him. 
and uh, also glad to see a gas company uh, rep, rep here. And uh, the homeless issue, I, I think the first step is help these people get dried out. That's a big problem. With that, I'll say Merry Christmas and wish us all a, a Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. Appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you, too. All right, we're going to go straight to... There's no reports uh, for tonight, actually. Um, we're gonna, those are going to be moved to January when uh, Mayor Pro Tem and Councilmember Marquez are here. City Manager's report. Uh, sure, uh, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank the Mayor and the City Council for appointing me to serve as your City Manager. I am quite honored, and I look forward to working with all of you. And uh, since this is the last meeting of 2019, I just want to recap some of the highlights of uh, 2019. Under the leadership of the Mayor and the City Council, you continue to be fiscally responsible with eight conse consecutive years of balanced budget. In the budget, also approved uh, funding for a third library, which will be located in Iris Plaza and is anticipated to be open in 2020. You also approved funding for a civic center, amphitheater, which is also anticipated to be open in 2020. This year, you opened a new skate park uh, at Community Park which was ahead of schedule and on budget. In the budget, you also approved funding for four additional police community service officers, and they're going through background checks and should start early next year. You also approved purchase of a new fire truck. In our Parks and Rec Department, we hosted over 29 community events such as the 4th of July, Springtastic, Youth Fest, Day of the Dead, Snow Day, and Holiday Tree Lighting. In our community development, we started the city's general plan called Mobile 2040, which will shape the future of Muna Valley. In our, in our animal service department, over 18 special adoption events resulting in 1,172 pets being ad adopted. We also had five low to no cost vaccination clinics resulting in over 350 pets vaccinated against rabies and 176 pets microchipped. In our public works department, talk about potholes, over 7,600 potholes were repaired in 1819 fiscal year and we're on track for similar amount for this year. Graffiti abatement, over 8,800 8, graffiti locations abated in the, in the same fiscal year. You also funded over 30 capital improvement plan projects, totaling over $34 million. Now, talking about awards, our city continued to win various awards with our Money Valley Utility, Finance Department, Purchasing, Technology Services, Parks and Community Services, Public Works Department and Economic Development all have received various awards and accolades this year. Under the leadership of the Mayor and the City Council, you continue to invest in higher mobile workforce and education initi initiatives with funding for higher grad. You also develop a new hiring veteran program in making Myrna Valley the best city for veterans in the Inland Empire. And working in collaboration and strong partnership with Myrna Valley College, we saw the first full year cohort of the Mayor's Challenge Moval Learn students to help our residents finish college. And this year, in partnership with the college, we will launch the first iMake Innovation Center at the college so that our youth can be the future inventors such as Elon Musk and Steve Jobs. And I think the Mayor and the City Council as the city continues to focus on econ development and attracting new businesses. This year, new businesses such as Floor and Decor and Sit and Sleep, new restaurants such as Safe House, Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf, Jitters Coffee, and new hotels such as Holiday Inn Express and Fairfield Inn and Suites all opened this year. We also continue to bring new Fortune 500 and international companies to our city, uh, such as Lowe's Home Improvement, ResMed, Ross Dress for Less, all expanded this year in Myrna Valley. New businesses such as Kiko Bedding, international companies such as Legrand, Solaris Paper, medical device maker Medline, and iHerb, a leading e-commerce company, all opened in Myrna Valley this year. And next year, we'll see opening of Golden Corral Restaurant, our third Cupcakes and Espresso, both slated to open in early 2020. We're going to see a new dealership, uh, such as Car Pros Kia at the Auto Center. We're going to see renovation at uh, the mall. We're going to see the district, which is over, already under construction, and Sewerage Town Center with new tenant announcements in the very, very near future. And also in the medical sector, our Riverside University Health System, the 200,000 square feet medical office building is under construction and it's near completion. Mm -hmm. I also want to commend the leadership, the mayor and the city council in the creation of 20,000 new jobs in the past six years, making Marin Valley an economic powerhouse 
in inland Southern California. In closing, on behalf of myself, the executive team and the employees of the City of Marina Valley, I want to wish the mayor, the city council, and the residents of Marina Valley happy holidays. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mike. <laughs> Appreciate that report um, and, and kind words. Thank you. Um, report uh, from City Attorney's Office. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, Council Members. Very briefly, good to be back. Um, secondly, uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, everything the best for, for the holidays of next year. Look forward to working with Mike and the rest of the staff and continuing to serve this city. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay. That leads us to our uh, concluding comments. Um, and Council Member, actually, who's first? I think it's Cabrera. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Councilor Zorn. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you so much for that report, Mike. That uh, really showcases the amazing work that the city staff has done. I want to thank you all for standing alongside the city um, and helping me, especially in this first year, get some of these important uh, programs created and implemented and doing the work for our residents. Um, it's deeply appreciated. Um, I'm just so honored to still um, have this opportunity to have three more years to, to, to actually do work for Reno Valley um, and our residents. I just wanted to use this time to uh, just highlight a couple things. Um, we, I'm on the public safety subcommittee and we actually uh, talked about animal adoption. So starting today through the 19th, we have a home for the holidays pet adoption. So please take advantage of that program. It's available from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. every day. Um, you'll have um, special rates for the adoption of dogs and puppies and cats and kittens. Additionally, after the new year, January 8th through 9th, um, we'll have a New Year's pet adoption. Um, and just want to let you know this is something that's very important to the city, um, that not only do we get our animals adopted, but that all of our animals are chipped. Every single animal needs to be chipped. Um, and we make initiative um, t that w if an animal is found and it's chipped, to reunite them with the owner instead of bringing them through the shelter. So that is one of the benefits. So please get your animal chipped, bring them down to the shelter um, to take advantage of that. Additionally, um, we had a great report from our fire. Um, our battalion chief mentioned that uh, fires are on the decrease. Normally during this time of year, fires, home fires, residential fires increase. Um, and I was asking, I, I was taught growing up that fires were due to Christmas trees and lighting. So every night I always unplug all my Christmas tree lights. Um, and he was mentioning also about um, that this is the time of year that a lot of people use their, um, their chimney, right? So please make sure that if it's a gas fireplace, you're not putting wood in there, um, that you're cle clearing your chimney out to not um, cause your house to have residential fires so we can keep up our rates. And then lastly, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, everyone. Please stay safe on the roads. There's going to be a lot of driving and commuting. Um, please do not drink and drive. Do not um, uh, uh, try not to be intoxicated concerning smoking things that make you high and dry. Use Uber, use Lyft. Um, no distracting driving. Um, we want to have di no deaths. That's the goal. No deaths during this holiday season. Um, so we, please, everyone, try to make it safely back home. And um, I'm looking forward to coming back in the new year and doing some of those things that we talked about for 2020. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member. We have uh, Council Member Cabrera. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, first of all, uh, uh, like Tom mentioned, uh, I saw in the news somewhere that our Sheriff uh, Department, specifically Deputy Brooks, uh, was making a big name for himself in the area because of the hats. He's, uh, he's setting a trend for Southern California, so um, thank you. Thank you for that, Deputy. Uh, next, our tree lighting ceremony that we had, um, what, two Saturdays ago now, I believe. Uh, it was very nice, you know, a lot of uh, really good feedback. It had to be relocated uh, temporarily or maybe permanently due to the construction of the amphitheater. And, um, you know, it was nice as always. It was a really, really uh, nice event. Uh, the, the kids, the children is, is, is what makes it uh, even better because whenever they see Santa on the screen, I mean, they go crazy. You know, they start laughing and they start cheering. So um, it was beautiful. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that for next year. Before you know it, it's going to be here again. Um, so so that was nice. Um, 
I attended the State of the District for Valverde Unified. Uh, you know, uh, so, some of you may know uh, that uh, that district goes into both the communities of Paris and Moreno Valley. It goes into my district as well. And so uh, I just, I love what they have going on over there. They're doing so many different things, you know, uh, from a high application uh, percentage when it comes to FAFSA, graduation rates, and also what they're doing with their police department is really amazing. Um, uh, really taking a heavy approach on that community-oriented policing. Um, so it's, it's amazing to see all the things that they're doing. And they're actually building a new facility across the street from the current, um, I believe it's uh, Valverde High School. Uh, they're building an uh, actual board meeting uh, room. And um, so they're looking forward to, I think it's going to open next year. Um, so that was this past week. And also I attended a BIA, the Building Industry Association Le Legislative Affairs Luncheon. Um, our keynote speaker was Senator Richard Roth. Um, so uh, he had a lot to say, you know, a lot to say, giving us an update about the things that he's worked on and um, kind of foreseeing what he's going to be working on this next um, legislative year. And uh, the, the big topic was housing. You know, the big topic was housing and how we deal with that and uh, trying to see what, if any, bills are going to be coming back for a second try and any potential new bills that are going to be coming out. So um, it was very informative and um, definitely it's a tough it's a tough uh, issue to tackle. But the good thing is that the conversations are being had. They're actively being had up in Sacramento and um, all the different actors are trying to figure out solutions to this situation that we're in as a state. So I have faith um, that that there will be a new slate of bills that will be uh, signed come next uh, next year, and uh, we'll continue to increase our supply of housing here in this state. And also, just on a side note, I think we've mentioned it before, but both Dr. Thornton and I will be on the Housing and Economic Development uh, Committee for the League of California Cities, so we'll both be advocating on behalf of Moreno Valley in that capacity next year. Uh, also, on the topic of Senator Roth, uh, today they had a senior scam stopper event at the Senior Center. Uh, it was well attended. You know, uh, they're always doing things here for our community. So I just want to thank Senator Roth. Um, and we actually have a representative from his office here tonight as well. So thank you all for what you do. Um, uh, I'm almost there, almost there. So uh, Operation Big Blessings is a nonprofit located here in the city. Um, and for a few Sundays now, they've been doing, um, uh, they've been offering free showers for homeless individuals here in the city. And I just, I'm so grateful for, to them, you know, for putting this together uh, out of their own funding. They're giving away clothes, you know, uh, hoodies, jackets, pants, everything, and toiletries to any, any homeless folks here in the community. And uh, I don't know how many they had this past Sunday, but two Sundays ago, they had about 15 people that actually came and took showers at their the little trailer that they have. So I'm um, hoping, uh, you know, that that benefits the community and actually helps and that some of these people, if they get the resource guide, they can, you know, find those resources and get off of the street. Um, so so just a shout out for them. Uh, census event is coming on February 1st is a tentative date uh, for next year. We're really trying to push that and educate the community and get the word out regarding the importance of the census. We're working with Senator Roth's office, a few other partners here in the community as well. So uh, we'll be sharing that information here pretty soon. Uh, also, Mike Lee, congratulations as well um, from, from me. Um, Definitely look forward to, to working with you. I know I've already thanked you a bunch of times, but we can't thank you all enough. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to this next year because there's a lot of things coming. You already mentioned a lot of them. I'll, I'll kind of just hit some of the points that I had. But new amphitheater is opening next summer. A new library is opening up. Uh, four new community service officers are on the way. Uh, the quarter project, the district with floor and decor, more road repairs, uh, the town center that we're working on, the general plan update. I mean, there's just so much. We, we thought this year was good. Wait until next year. There's going to be a lot more ribbon cuttings next year. So it's exciting. Um, and with that, just want to say um, Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, safe travels. Um, really enjoy that time that you get to spend with your family. Eat a little bit for me, you know, on my behalf. And uh, Happy New Year to everyone as well. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Council Mayor Cabrera, and um, just on that spirit uh, as well as as far as the holidays, I'm so blessed uh, to still continue to be uh, your mayor of the city, city of Myrna Valley. Uh, you know, we continue to grow in in such a 
growing city, you know, with the 20,000 new jobs, you know, in just the last six years, 50% only developed of, of the community. Uh, we have a general plan that we're actually working on, you know, and this general plan is going to really be the vision, you know, for, for our community. And my vision for it is, is that we're going to have, th that this is going to be a destination, a regional destination uh, for various cities throughout the region. And then we're going to have, obviously, the town center, like Mike mentioned, and uh, the amphitheater. And those are huge, huge, huge things that other cities, I mean, just envy us, you know, because they wish that they could be doing those types of things, but we're going to be doing those things. And so I, as the mayor, I'm uh, super excited and really, really thrilled. I'm also thrilled of, you know, the, the colleagues that I have here as well and, and the team that we have in moving the city forward. Um, as far as um, a few different things that um, kind of took place, um, I did have um, a, a several speaking engagements uh, the last couple of weeks, but I'll just highlight one. One was on the Climate Resiliency uh, Symposium. Uh, so I want to thank uh, the city clerk who attended that with me. And so we actually talked about um, the different natural disasters that can occur, and especially in our, our area, you know, which we're uh, prone to earthquakes and fires and those kinds of things. So we got to keep that in mind. Um, make sure that you reach out to our CERT office, you know, or you, or you get the CERT training, you know, that's really, really important as well. And all of those, um, we have packets and a lot of information on that. So that's very, very important and keep that in mind. Now, if you notice uh, council member, actually Mayor Pro Tem Bach is not here tonight. And that's because unfortunately her aunt passed away. So I wanna close the, uh, the meeting in, in her memory and her aunt's name is Virginia Baca. So we'll go ahead and close the meeting and adjourn the meeting at 6.50 p.m. in memory of Virginia Baca. <laughs>